What is process? Process, a series of actions, changes, or functions bringing out a result. The process of digestion. The process of attaining a driver's license. A series of operations performed in making or treatment or of a product. Manufacturing process. Leather dyed, turning, or tanning, right? Everything goes through a process. Everything goes through a process. Nothing arrives without a process because you didn't see it. We all got cars, but that car went through a process to be made. Before you drove a car, it was parts. Before you drove a car, it was just a seat, just a chassis, just an engine. You can't go anywhere with just your engine. You need transmission for the engine. Everything goes through a process. Combustion process. Um, Y'all ready for revelation? You're going to talk to me? Or are you going to talk to me? You know why Satan's mad at all of us? The Lord gave me. Satan is mad at all of us because he was spoken to existence, but we had a process of being made. Every angel is from light. There is no process to it. And the and and the the anger, the anger of the evil ones is the fact that God took his time to make us and he breathed into us and we're weaker than them, but stronger. You can't cut an angel and find blood. And they're jealous. The devil is not jealous. Don't listen to people say you took his place. We could not take his place in heaven. That ain't true. So you, we, we took his place? No, we're not standing on the hot coals of the altar of God. Neither are we standing behind God lifting him up. You know why he took his place? It's because God said, I'm not commanding nobody to lift me up no more. I'm making you choose it. Y'all not with me, man. I don't want nobody to lift me up because I made you to do that. I'm giving you a choice whether you want to lift me up or not. And this is where God gets his glory. He gets his glory when we choose to praise him through our process. And process usually looks like trouble. And process usually looks like crack, cocaine, alcohol. Y'all not hearing me. Y'all not hearing me. Uh, many divorces. Babies out of wedlock. Going to jail. Coming out of jail. Almost going to jail. Going to court. Evading court. Them coming to the house to get you for child support. Oh, I'm talking about me. I don't have nothing to hide from y'all. It's a process. If you got a man or woman of God that never went through sin, then what are they preaching? You can't preach deliverance unless deliverance hits you. Unless you know the mighty hand of God that pulled you away from something, how can you preach it? How can you teach it? You're, you're a phony. You can't teach and preach what you haven't been through. The greatest healing evangelists usually were born sick. Katamoshiende. Greatest people have tasted Tasted how death tastes like when it comes to hit you, but yet it couldn't take you. God needs you alive. I need you to put your hand on your chest and say, God needs me alive. Because only alive people can deliver people. Lord, hallelujah. And if you're not sold on delivering people from the hand of death, and I'm not talking about casting out devils. That's a part of it. When I say deliverance, that means delivering them from hell. You're not sold on delivering people from hell, then something's wrong with that picture. But, but, but in order to deliver people, God got to deliver you perpetually. Our deliverance doesn't stop. Y'all not hearing me. Because most of us got to be delivered from us. And isn't it funny that when we get saved, the one thing the devil wants to make that sure that we have is judgment. So we look for stuff. And anytime you're looking on, like I said, anytime you're looking, you'll find it. 
You find exactly what you're looking for. But you can't look and walk. You can't stop. Why? Oh, God, I felt like tuning up right there. Why? Staying you here gazing. It is, it is, it is, I, I, I give you that, disciples, that it is very noble of you to look at him go up. But he don't need your eyes looking at him go up. He commanded you to go to Jerusalem because he ain't helping you no more. The Jesus that y'all know is not helping you no more. You need another form of what he wants to give you, and it's called power. And if you don't get to Jerusalem, you won't see Jesus in another way. Most of us is gazing at where he was, but not where he's going to make himself transformed. I knew it would hit you. God was here. In 78, God showed up here. <laughs> That's why we call this church Mount, Mount Hebron. Because God was here. And God ain't been here since the day he left here. And you named something and kept worshiping it. And you made that an idol, not him. Because you're supposed to find where he's at. Not where he was. My mother's God ain't here no more. The, the Eloise Young that I knew and the power that she had and the might that she walked in in the spirit ain't here no more because her body's not here. And an anointing needs to follow a body. Okay, Jesus said to his father, well, he wasn't, he said, prepare me a what? Not a spirit. He said, prepare me a body. I got to infuse that body with the purpose of God. And if there's no body, there's no purpose being done on earth. Because ah, earth needs a legal right from the spirit realm to be operated here. And most of us forfeit it because our spirits don't agree with the spirit. And when we don't agree, and when our attitude is off and we sit in God's house with other agendas other than worship, then he closes his hand. So then five feel it, 35 don't. Seven hear it, 27 don't. When it will there ever be a full outpour of his spirit upon, the Bible says, and I will pour out my spirit upon all what? He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon what? Y'all, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I will pour out my spirit, not upon your spirit. Spirit needs a body. Ask demons. Demons need a body. Everybody's fighting for your body, but you. Lord. Get control of your mind. I need those who are here mm, that you hear me. Put your hand on your head and say, get control of your mind. Get control of your mind. You're brilliant, but you can't be brilliant with your head everywhere. You're, 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 you're great in the word, but you're, you're useless in body. You can be great in the word and useless in body, so the word ain't going forth. You're just a stationary great. Because you haven't gone through the process of elimination. I am tired of no growth. And I can't grow because you won't grow. And we can't go because you won't go. Go don't mean separation. Go means that wherever you're at, you need to do what you're supposed to be doing for the Lord. Go. Stop complaining. We want to make avenues that we never take. Why make a street and you never walk it? Yeah, you're right. I'm a path maker. That means if I want to go fishing bad enough, I'll take my knife and make a way. I'm not looking for a way. Therefore, when I come back, I know what I made, not what I'm looking for. Because if I take another man's path, it could be traps there. Because another man's path means he wants it, not it's not for me. 
Lord Jesus, hallelujah. So when they went to Samaria, they wasn't the first to do it. Jesus had already been there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, see. Even though he said, I wasn't here. I didn't come for y'all. I came for the Jews first. I came for the Jews. But why did he go to Samaria? There needed to be gospel seeds there. So when they got there, they weren't cutting away. They were in, Lord, okay, I'm doing too much. It's not even my message. Okay, now, look at process. Process in the Hebrew is uh, dokami, or, or dokami. It is, listen to this, for process. It is proof of genuineness. Approval through testing. It means tested and true. Now, that means if there's tested and true, they could be tested and false. You can fail your test, but still be tested. You can go through a process. Hear me, y'all. You can go through a process and fail it. Just because you came out on the other side doesn't mean you have a passing grade. Because it's, it's not that you went through, it's how you went through. If you don't go through something, believing and praising and believing that God is still able, whatever your result were, then you failed it. Because you came out angry at God. You can come out angry. Most of us, I want all y'all to hear me. And this is especially for the ladies. That's what the Lord said. He said, you have went through, but now you're angry about it. And because you're angry about it, you failed. And he said this very plain, plain to me today. He said, I need people that come out on the other side and then pull out a tambourine. I need Miriam. That's what he told me. He said, I need people that come out with, not with the results they want, but the results I asked for. Don't you find it very strange that they all made it out, but only a woman pulled out a tamarind? Because she packed it. Y'all, <laughs> there's no tamarind that showed out on the other side. That means what she packed, she believed that she was going to praise. Lord, I know this ain't my message, but I need somebody to say, I believe I'm going to pray. I'm going to make it out. That's why I'm packing my tambourine. I'm packing something, Lord. The tambourine didn't get flooded. Tell somebody, Lord, I'm going to preach that when I go to somebody's church. Pack your tambourine. Pack your tambourine. Pack. Tell somebody, pack your tambourine. Just pack your tambourine. You're coming out. On the other side, and you're gonna need a utensil to praise him with. Lord Jesus. <sighs> now listen, y'all, let me give you some of this. It takes time from when an item enters a process until it exits a process. This process is called uh this lead time, we call it in the business world, it's called uh PLT. All right. Anybody heard of Little's Law? It's called Little's Law. Okay, Little's Law, the total cost, the total time consisting of the process of each time from one workstation to another workstation. Um, waiting is usually considered non-value added work and should be reduced or eliminated by much, at, but by, as much as feasible. Waiting. Now, that's the world. But waiting to us is different. Waiting on God is not wasted time. Waiting on God is wasted time in the world. That's the time they say be a go-getter. God doesn't need your go-getting. He needs your obedience. Obedience is go-getting. Don't you know, I watched Apostle Selman, Selman and he talks about this thing called, um, uh, the, uh, he calls this the law of speed, right? Uh, there's a law of speed. And he was saying how God restores something, right? Uh, he was talking about restoration. He was talking about, but he was talking about the speed of God, which is, which is even deeper than restoration, right? Because if I restore something back to its place, I've put it back where it should be. Okay? Can I get two brothers? Come here, Kellen. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, come on the floor so they can, well, up here they can see you. So come up here. Come up here, Cokes. I'm only enacting what I saw. Now stand, stand that uh, sideways, uh huh, next to each other. 
sideways next to each other. Now, y'all watching me? Y'all watching? You look so nice. Now, this is me. I'm, 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 I'm acting as, I'm acting as, as, as God, lower G, okay, for some of y'all holy than holy, okay? Now, let's advance three steps. One, both of you, two, three, okay. You arrived at the same place, right? Now, the goal is to the keyboard. Okay? The goal is to the keyboard. But, now this is God governing everything. He knows the, the end from the beginning. Right? So either where he stands, he's still there. Y'all didn't get that? Doesn't matter if he's standing in the middle, he's at the end and the beginning at the same time. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere right now at all times because he's, you're breathing him. Okay. Mm-hmm. Everywhere there's breath in the world, he's there. Let's not go there, but he's there. That's why you need to tell the devil, he's never left me. Okay, he's never left me. Silence don't mean I left. Okay, Lord Jesus. My God might be silent, but he's not vacant. Okay, now, now, I'm going to be life and circumstance. Right? Try to take a step forward. Kellen, you take one step forward. Life kept coax back, right? Try to take another step forward, coax. You can, but Kellen, advance. I'm gonna pull you back now because you had a baby out of wedlock. Church, no, the devil's a liar. I know, but you know, still happen. <laughs> it happened, okay? Devil ain't a liar late at night, okay? Um. Now, Kellen, finish the race. Touch the keyboard. Okay. Now, because he has, because he has, has let life and the devil hold him back, I want to give to him restoration from God. Be restored to the place you was. Stop, because this is where you were. That ain't good enough. So some of you are stuck on restoration. Restoration never advanced you further than where you was. But God needs to give you speed. That means Kellen has arrived, but in the flesh, so have you. Now, what God does in advancement is he puts you further than the keyboard. Kellen arrived, but he hasn't advanced. Coates has advanced because God gave him speed. He did this in one night. He did this in five years. Some of you awake, Lord Jesus. This is what God wants to do for some of you. He essentially wants you to say, I'm taking a four-year degree in college, but you're done in seven days. But because you hate process, okay? Let me give you another. You don't think that's true? I preach this all the time. When they're struggling in the boat, they're struggling in the boat. They wake Jesus up for hours. For hours they're struggling. Y'all hear me? For hours they're struggling. They are struggling to get to the other side. And they wake him up. When they wake him up and he rebukes what's been fighting them, there's no more rowing. The next scripture says they arrived. (laughs) Do do y'all miss this? See, some of y'all's process is go through until he stands up and rebukes what's fighting you. But you want to give up because he's asleep. No, y'all, see, y'all, y'all, y'all miss, y'all miss this. Y'all miss this. You got to thank God that he's with you. He's on your boat. He's just not saying nothing. But when he stands up, every boat that was with you arrives. There's no more work. Your your process was to get to the struggle. You didn't hear that. Your process was that you get to struggling. You got to get to struggle before you can get victory. You want to quit the struggle before victory. 
You want to quit trying to be friends with people. You want to quit relationships. You want to quit it because it's too much. That's all. Oh, oh, okay. It's just too much. And you don't know that after the struggle, there's no more toiling. Because when he stands up, he changes complexity. One rebuke from Jesus changes the complexity of every... Remember, the Bible says that there was one main boat, but little boats were with them. That means who's attached to you gets delivered too. I need you guys to hear the word of God in process. Stop skating the process. You know how we skate the process? What comes out of your mouth? Because that's a proclamation. And the devil wants you to make negative proclamations so that when you make a real one, it's negated. There's no power. Because you have proclaimed one one thing I never did was, compl- was, was proclaim defeat in any sickness I went through. You met, my wife is right here. I never said, this is it, baby. Never said it. If I was going to die, it was going to take me believing. That's very weak for some of y'all. You ain't been there yet. If I, I did, did, do you know how many days I went to sleep not knowing if I was going to get up? Where I felt death on me? Like, you ain't making up tomorrow. I was, I would be, I would go to sleep. With, when I got out that COVID thing, my wife would tell you, every time I went to sleep, I didn't sleep for months. Y'all think? Oh, I <laughs> because I would think, I would wake up thinking the thing was back in my throat again. And I, <laughs> that's how I woke up every time. So I sleep two hours and wake up <laughs> gasping. For months, I did that. For months, I would start, I'd be talking to my wife or talking to whoever, and all of a sudden, i get trapped like this. And tears start coming out my face because I'm having a flashback. The devil would show, my, show me in the bed with all the tubes coming out of my face. And when I was, a, and how I knew it was the devil, because when I was casting out a demon out of the girl, she told me. Oh, see, I don't believe. She told me, a little girl in Newburgh told me my flashback. Yup, it comes to Bahura Bakata. We're living in the last day. And if you don't go through the process of God, you'll have no power for what's coming. Now, now, here. We want, what did I put? We want promise, but not process. So we praise God for the promise. Praise Him. Praise him for the promise. Because He promised never to leave you, nor forsake you. Leave you where? Where would he leave you? And where would he forsake you? And why would you feel like that? Because you're in the middle of something that has no answer. God, you're in the middle of the valley that has, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I have to do something. I have to fear no. Because literally, I'm in the place where death is. I'm sorry, y'all, but there's no, if there's a shadow, the real thing is there. (laughs) <laughs> it, it ain't the devil with the light going like this making a form of death in the no ain't no shadow puppet death is there I don't fear no evil because he's with me but he's not present he's not felt he's not seen he's just because he's all knowing he's there because he don't come to your rescue. See, we want Jesus to come to our rescue in body form. If you can ready to get hit, hit by a car, you wouldn't mind Jesus rescuing you, rescuing you. But you don't want him coming out and telling you about your sin. The Lord got me one day. He said, why do you want my visitation? The first thing I'm going to do is correct you. I don't care what you follow. You're not pure. Paul says it. If you follow the law to every letter, if you follow every commandment, if you did, if I give to the poor and do all the, didn't the rich man tell Jesus that? Yeah. Well, he came to him saying, hey man, look at this. And what did he say? That's why, Jesus, you know what, what our, our righteousness is at is what? You know what a filthy rag is, right? It's what women use monthly. That's how your righteousness is. So why 
Run after what you can't attain when you can have grace through him. By grace are we saved. Grace is a process because we don't know how to use it. You know what the devil wants us to do? Y'all ready for this? He wants us to take grace and say it like we get ready to eat a meal. Say your grace. And you can't say it, you have to walk it. Can I help you with this? Jesus never gave grace over food, he gave thanks. Because thanks is finality. Oh. Y'all, but... <laughs> He said, thank you for this. Anytime he wanted a miracle from his father, he thanked him. Thank you. Lord, you're crying. <laughs> God, do it, Lord. <laughs> do it, Jesus. <laughs> and all he did, and if he's our example, sometimes we need to get to situations and start praising God. God, I thank you because it's already done. Y'all need to pass that down the road and tell, don't stop, stop crying about this thing and start thanking him. It's already done. We following the master. Thanks is finality. I thank you for doing it. Now, okay, I don't even have time to do all this uh, because uh, uh, y'all love the Bible, right? For First Corinthians 13 and 13. It's easy. But now faith, these things, these three things abide. You don't have to stand up for this one. I, I, this ain't my crutch, but get 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 First Corinthians up there on the machine. Put it up on that machine. I'm gonna get y'all in the back for this machine not being looking right. Whoever your leader is, y'all know who his, who his name is. Y'all gonna be bound. I want this looking better. I'm not playing. I want this thing right. Whatever y'all gotta do, glue it together or whatever. Get up there. Somebody hold it. Two people holding it while we're having service. I don't care. If <laughs> professionalism at all costs. All right. And y'all saying amen. Make sure it's done too. Y'all come here too. Come on, let's get it together. If I can speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. That reasoning intentionally, keep on going, spiritual devotion such as inspired by God, God's love for and in us, this is Amplified Classic, I am only a noisy gong or a clangy cymbal. A lot of us are noisy gongs and clangy cymbals because love is an application. You can't say I love you. You know, my mom used to say I love you so I'm going to beat you. And I never understood it. I mean, if you love me, why are you beating me? That's like, you beating me. You beating the brakes off of me. She said, but I love you. And I didn't understand it because love is an application. So she applied pain because love needed to correct me. And I never understood. If you love me, why don't you ease me? And most of us in here, because our parents never took time to explain whippings or explain certain things, we only look at correction as capital punishment and not the application of love. And a, and a lot of us in here also, we think arguing is application. It is not. Your method of love doesn't work for everybody. Learn a method that God is teaching you so you can apply it to all souls differently and evenly. Including your children. Sometimes you don't need to beat your children. You need to take them out and talk to them and now do more. But you got anger in you and you mad and you just frustrated. I hate to hear that word because everybody now is frustrated, frustrated. I'm so frustrated. I'm so frustrated. I'm so frustrated. I'm so, I want, I would love to smack frustration out of a lot of us, but I can't. You know why? Because we allow it to happen because frustration don't come just like that. It takes time. You know, frustration is a process too. It's a buildup, like plaque in the heart. You don't just get plaque. It's a buildup. You get plaque because you want to eat what you want to eat. Go every night you're eating some type of grease. 
Your cholesterol is, is higher than the building. And you wonder what's happening to me. I, my bone can't be. I'm numb all over. Keep eating them cheesy burgers and all that mess and them chicken wings at nighttime and you'll be sick. Ask me how. Keep on with the scripture. We're going through process. Y'all too. If I have prophetic powers, I like that. The gift of interpreting divine will and purpose and possess all knowledge. Understand all the secrets and truths and mysteries. That's great. Now go to 13 and 13. Also, now, love, also faith, hope, love. Abide faith, conviction, and belief. Respect in man's revelation. <laughs> Respect in man's relation to God and divine things. This is great. Growing out of God's love. And see, the Amplified Classic explains these words. You understand? Okay? Love for us. Let's get these three. But the greatest of these is love. So the Abide of faith, what? Hope, and what? Love. Faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Somebody say faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Say it again, faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Do you know all three of those are a process? All three, right? I can't go through all what I have, but faith equals knowledge. Hope equals trust. Right? And love is the action. A lot of us are missing components out of that three so we don't see God's hand. You want to see God's hand, but you don't have knowledge of what you're, you don't have knowledge of the thing, you don't have no trust in the thing, and you have no action to a thing. None. Your, ac your action is on purpose. Because love is on purpose. For God so loved the world that he did something. For God so loved the world that he did something. He gave. He gave something. He couldn't take away his Godship, so he gave it up to his son. Be God on earth. Be God on earth. But while you're doing that, just suffer everything they go through. So you can be touched by the feelings of all their infirmities. Get your hand cut. You know, I was thinking this the other day because, you know, my mind goes very deep in, 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 in the word and the Lord. And I said, Lord, how did the world interpret you cutting your hand? Because you bled. Why was that blood different than the blood you shed? He said, because I had to bleed while I was sinful. So sin was being applied to me. Sin wasn't applied to me on the cross. It was applied to me when I decided that it was going to be time. That's why I started to be more quiet and more quiet. I didn't say nothing. So nothing wrong would come out of my mouth. The application of sin was happening to him when he accepted the responsibility of dying. Good God from Zion. Some of you, when you, when you receive the responsibility of dying for others, then you'll see what I'm saying. You can't shift people without dying for them. Some of you, best way that God can get us, plank, learn how to bear it, but get the job done. Our job is to sing to God, not to complain about Sally. Yeah. Y'all missing very simple, very simple revelation that if God can get us to understand it, we would kill the world, kill every devil out there because our, our mindset is on the process of God for our lives. Um, here, now, I'll be done with this one. I'm going to give you an example. Turn to Esther. This I told you was for the ladies. This is what the Lord said. It's for the ladies. If he can change, if he can change, um, if he can change the core of the women, if he can change the core of the women, you will be attractive to what needs deliverance. Yeah. 
you'd be attractive to what needs deliverance, healing, inner healing. I can't heal a woman in her, in, in her innermost parts. I don't even want to try. I don't even want to sit there and talk. Y'all start talking, and I'd be like, God, y'all be honest, man. Sometimes my wife be talking to me, and I'd be like, what? And what? And I have to look at her and say, I'm not no girl. What are you talking about? I do it all the time. You understand what I'm saying? That's my wife's favorite line. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes I'll be like, nah. I don't feel that. I don't, just tell the truth. I don't feel that. I, I'm the, talk to another woman. I don't know what that is. And I don't even want to act like I understand. As much as understanding as I want to be, I don't feel that, baby. No. It's the truth, though. Any married men in here know what I'm saying? Well, be careful now. Any man in here know what I'm saying? Y'all afraid to say anything? Hmm, thank you. Just going on. You know what she said to me? And I said this to her. And you know what I tell them? And because, and I know. It's the best you can do, brother. Mm -hmm. Just make that concern face. So true. So true. <laughs> so true. Oh, God. I don't do that to you, do I? <sighs> Turn to Esther 1 and 11. Just give me 10 minutes and I'm done. Okay, let's start this. Uh, let's, well, well, 1 and 10. Let's do that. Okay, I'm reading from the, I'm do King James. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded uh, Mehuman, Bezda, Harbona, Bigtha, Agabatha, Zethar, Karskus, the seven chamberlains that served the, I did pretty good, this served in the presence of Xerxes, the king. To bring Vashti, some would say Vashti, but to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. Some might say fair to look on. But the queen, Vashti, refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth. And his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times. Wow, y'all heard that, right? The, the king said to the wise men, do you understand this is the problem with the church? That the problem with the church is that everything that we have, everything that we have not adopted, the world has adopted because it's biblical. That there should be wise men that know the times. That's why they had the sons of Issachar, but we don't have them no more. Somebody needs to, even though he was king, he needed wise men. Even though he had an idea of the time, he just needed to be, he needed to be okay that what he was feeling was right. They're not telling him, oh, you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to feel that. No, they are to, they are basically, what the Holy Ghost is to us. He's a comforter. The king needed comfort. That's why you have friends. You need, and when you need, when you have a thing in your head, you're going to do it anyway. Why do you tell your friend? Why? Why you feel the need to run to tell a friend? Because you need comfort in your decision. So the king has wise men that read the time, because every king was spiritual. Every king had, every king was more spiritual than the normal person. That's why they thought, that the, 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 the Egyptian kings were gods because they come from a line. They believe their blood was a line of God blood. We know it's not true, but they were spiritual. A king could have well easily been a wise man. Easily, easily. It was the order of the king that said, kill all the babies. Where did it, kill them babies. 
Why? He woke up with that notion. He, he, he would have killed the babies whether he had an agreement or not because it was in him. That's what you understand what I'm saying, right? If you got a leader who's not, who can't feel, that's not, they're not a leader, okay? Now, they told the wise men, where, where I'm at now? In 13, then the king, y'all look quiet today. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the time, so, for, you know, for the king was king's manner toward all that knew the law and judgment. See that? And, and the next unto him was Karshina, Seth, the, whatever, uh, uh, Matha, Tarshish, Me, Mears, Marsha, <laughs> Marcina, Mamuka, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face, mm -hmm, which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of the king. Right? Okay. Go to 17. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad to all women. Jesus. So they shall despise their husbands. Their eyes, in their eyes. Oh my God. When it shall be reported. The king Xerxes commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. I mean, uh, okay. Now, I don't even finish. This is the process. God is going to use someone's rejection for an open seat. Amen. Uh, I thought y'all would say amen, but y'all, because <laughs> some of y'all be like, Lord, am I being rejected? No. Uh, what let me help you what the, king, what the queen decided not to show up to is an opening for God to put you there uh, what somebody won't do will be your job um, now okay make, let's take the short route to this when I looked this up it baffled me that Vashti's name actually means beauty But when I looked up the name of Esther, Esther's name, because that's, uh, you know, they changed the name, but Esther's name means star or myrtle. Myrtle is a plant that grows. It is, it, the, it, when you describe the myrtle plant, it says that it's very fragrant and it's glossy. So it's going to be seen and smelled. Okay. Now, this is what God is saying to some of y'all ladies. I want you to hear me. He said, don't choose beauty, choose stardom. Okay. Ah, yep, you didn't hear it. And I'm not talking about stardom like I want to be seen. That's the devil. But God is going to take someone's beauty and cancel it. They're being canceled because they're not obedient. And he's going to make you a star because you obeyed. Lord, I don't have a right church. I'm talking, and I'm talking to everybody in the room. Listen, Vashti, who means beauty. The Bible says that the king wanted her to come out and show herself. Now, there's some things that some translations or some commentators say that it was, it was the custom that the king showed off her beauty. And that when she showed up, now the king was having their party, seven-day feast, but so was she. The problem is that she didn't want to leave hers. So you don't, you, you, you have to understand the story. She was important to the women. She didn't want to leave her spot. And, the king, and usually what was said is that she had to show up naked to show off her figure and how beautiful she was. She must have been a bad, bad woman for the king to show off her naked body. Y'all not talking to me. Why? Y'all Christians are the, the y'all need to stop faking like y'all don't know what naked is. Amen, somebody. Amen. Sitting here acting like y'all so holy. Devil is a liar. You have babies, don't you? Okay. Um, she had to show herself, whether it was naked or not, if she was on display. But she refused power. She didn't think that she could be shifted or moved. Mm. Uh, um, 
God is getting ready to help the church divorce a notion that's in the church. That there's not a shifting that's happening in the body of Christ. And that, and that the maids, the unknown names are coming to the top because they're the ones that are obedient. But the ones that have position already that don't want to obey the command, it's on purpose because the times are shifting. We don't need her beauty. We need obedience. We don't need, Lord, y'all not hearing me. We, we, if we needed your skill set in a matter, it would be different. But this is a God time. So God now, listen to what I'm saying. A lot of us, and God got me the other day, got me. He said, you've been focusing on church and not my souls. And if you focus on church and not my souls, you'll build up my church and it'll be empty. Won't be nobody in it. Because all you care about is church. Oh, I'm going up here. I'm starting the church up here. I'm going here. God lead me here. God only leads you to where people are at. Don't lead you to a building. Oh, tell my Keisha. He leads you to where people are at. People make your place. And if I build you, y'all build the church. You know, it's funny that a king has never built his own castle. Okay. A king has never laid brick to his own castle. Never. Never. And I'm not saying that I'm a king, but understand that certain concepts, the people of God got to build it. Through process. Through the process of, now, can I, I'm just going to go through here. Through the process of, of Esther being picked because of Mordecai. Esther has to now go through a process. She's pretty already. She's bad. But now she has to go through a process of beautification. Because she don't smell like kingdom. She smells like a Jew woman. She's a Hebrew smell. She has to get herself ready for kingdom purpose. And if all you look, if you look in the mirror and you go, I'm ready, you ain't ready. Ready is not judged by you. It's judged by another. Lord, if someone can't stand over you and say, God said you're ready, you're not ready. If you're looking in the mirror and say, I'm ready, that's not God, baby. Because even Jesus went to John. He couldn't start ministry until he got dipped in the water. She has to go through the, the series of beautification. I can't go through all that. But she had to smell good. She had to look good. She had to be shaved, hear me, because those kingdoms didn't like hair. Okay, I won't, yeah, yeah, because look, look at what Joseph had to do. Joseph, when he gets, a part of Joseph's problem was he needed to be hairless. But his culture said, grow your hair. And some of us, mm, can I say this without y'all being mad? You won't adjust to where God is sending you. You want to look like what you came from. You don't ever, if somebody said put a razor to your head, you wouldn't touch it. You'd be mad at them because what you hold dear, God don't care about. And you should never be mad at what he can grow back. But through your process, you want to keep what you want. Certain things grew on you. Your attitude grew on you. Your spirit grew on you. Your dominating spirit grew on you. And God's saying, cut it. Because where I'm taking you, you need to be humble. But you're saying, no, God, this is me. Wow. Uh, this is me. They got to accept me for me. I, I still hear you. You can hear. See, a lot of us hear God, but the application of what we hear will never happen. Because the application has to happen through people. Nobody's hearing the way you are. Because you still got your hair on you. You still smell like a Hebrew woman. You haven't been bathed. Every day she had to ritually bathe in this stuff to make her body take on a fragrance that, the, that would be pleased. See, it's not good enough to look the part. You got to smell it too. Because you got to lay with the king. And if you don't smell like kingdom, he's going to reject you. You get in the bed with a king, you better smell like what he wants. Because he's the king. And because you can't, I don't want to smell like that. I don't like roses. You better learn to love what you hate. 
Nobody goes to the army and says, oh, I want to get up every morning at five and run two miles and do this and be, and be yelled at by a man and have 15 minutes to shower and to shave and to do that. And I, gotta, I can't have one drop of hair on my face every day. I got to be clean and this and that. No, you don't want that, but it's discipline. So you go through it to get to the end. Somebody yell out process. Okay, just about done here. Now, God needs to get, how does God get Esther from a small, now this is, this is a result of, of, of Jews that are uh, the exile and all this kind of stuff that we don't need to talk about, but this is a result, she's left over. <laughs> God have mercy. What's left over is going to help everybody. What was left is going to, yo, God, the leftover is getting ready to deliver. <sighs> What's left over is going to be greater than anything we've ever seen. It was a no-name person that delivered no a no-name. You won't understand that in this last day, God is not doing revival through great names. He's doing revival through names that nobody heard before because the name don't matter. His does. Most of us are not sold on people if they don't have a pedigree. Who are they? Can you trace them? Who are they traced to? Who's their father and mother in the gospel? Jesus is both. You judging me based on who I came from? The death. I mean, that's necessary at times. But stop trying to judge me based on who I came from. Mm, Lord. Because a lot of people came from people and they turned out to be very whack. In every way, y'all not okay. Who's they father and mother? Uh, my last point because I'm not supposed to be up here. Uh. How can I get? How can God take us? Everybody in this room, hear me. How can God take us? Just think about this. Think it this way. This is the. How can God take this church right here and replace it with the Potter's house and we still function? If we were the Esthers, how could God shift all of us right now to the potter's house and we work it? Because I'm just talking about a big platform. I'm not talking about Jake's himself. I'm just talking about what you know as a big platform. How does he do it? How you take over the, the school of ministry, the homeless thing they do, because you don't know how he built up his church. So he built up his church by sending people out every day, every, every Sunday. They went out. They got all the homeless people. He was the first one to do this over there. He, would, he dressed them, cut their hair, gave them clothes to wear, set them in the church, and no one knew who they were. So how did God take all those concepts, put us, Esther, because Vashti decided, I, I'm not showing up. How does it work? How does it work? How does it work in you? Is, is God big enough in you that he can transform you, break you down, make you take baths to make, cut, make you take off all your garments that you used to? Take a bath in what you're not accustomed to. Smell like what you've never smelt before. Cut what you have let grow all your life and put you on in the front of the world and you function properly. It won't happen. It won't happen until we go through the process of eliminating who we used to be. I don't care how old you are. You are stuck in your way because you chose. Because God is trying to get you to smell another way. Hey! You cannot work for God the way you used to be. Because he's not moving that way no more. And if you don't find and search the way he's smelling, the way he's moving, you'll be discarded. No, you'll be an altar that we say he was there. I refuse to be something that God visited but didn't stay. Can I help y'all? 
as much as we preach on the tabernacle, it's useless right now. As much as we talk about the mercy seat, we ain't running to it. As much as we talk about the brazen altar, oh, the rod that budded, we would hold that stuff and start crying. <laughs> oh, God, oh, the anointing. You wouldn't feel nothing. Ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing there. You can lay in the grave of Jesus right now and be like, Lord, give me resurrection power. It ain't coming. He sent the Holy Ghost. He didn't send a memory. Good God. Everybody would be there laying in his grave to get power. Everybody. But yet we want to do it with our ministries. We want to use the same material. We don't want to discover what's new and gone. We don't want to look abroad and say, Lord, show me what's next. Show me the process of elimination. What I got to get out of me to be what you want me to be. He'll talk. He'll talk. A lot of us, we got, because it's pride that lives in us. The pride not to change. The pride to say I'm wrong. The pride to say I'm only doing what I think I know. Not what he said to me. God gives you, you know, every move of God, and I'm done. Every move of God starts with a discovery. Every revival. The Welch revival was one thing, but then Azusa came and was something completely different. And when moves of God, when the move of God comes, everybody at first says it's a work of the devil. Because now you got people shaking and quaking. What we fight, shaking and quaking. This is what they was doing in Azusa. And shouting. And people said that was witchcraft. Read the story. That's witchcraft. But the power of God was so strong in Azusa that people would be coming to Azusa, get off the train, and fall out. And there was bodies. Bodies. Do you, do you, listen, this is reported. Bodies laying, getting off the train. The people that fell out was the people with, with, with purpose to go. The, 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 the fire department reported that the building looked like it was on fire. It was nothing to put out. <laughs> it was only to be consumed by us. I would have jumped in the middle of that flame. And some of us, if revival's going to come to change the world, it can't look like what it used to be. It won't look like an Azusa revival. It won't look like a Welch revival. It won't look like the Florida revival. It won't look like nothing but what God is sending. But because you haven't gone through the process of changing you, you won't see it. And when it comes, you'll say, that's not God. The, the easiest thing, you know, I watched the comic. He said, the easiest thing to do is be dismissive. The easiest thing to do is say somebody's crazy. Very easy. Because that means I don't have to take the time to understand you. And we all understand crazy. And, and crazy is a big umbrella. She crazy. Did you find out why? No. You didn't investigate. I don't want to know why. Then you can't label. You can't label what you have not, what you have not researched. How are you labeling it from the outside? You ever got meat? It said meat, and you, it's red, and it has the date on it, but when you open it, it don't smell like what it looked like. Mm, wonder why. Did you go back and say to the manufacturer, this is rotten. No, you threw it out. You discarded it, or you went and got your money back. You didn't eat it. Why, what, why do we do more for, for the world than for God, Pastor Andrew? Why? And why do we treat people like old meat? What's wrong with us, Pastor Jules? God, Master God needs His people to go. Through. I'm done. God needs His people to process. You, the only way you get into the front, the only way, is to be changed, to smell better, to look better. You don't listen. As much as I love the Lord and I could do this, I'm not ready for television. Television means I got to have nice skin. Do this. Make sure I have dressed nice. Because some people were not accepting me the way I am. 
So God will tell me, hey, wear a suit. Put your shoes on. You can't be on TV like this. Oh, you don't think God talks that way, right? Hey, get more fit. Lose some weight. Go brush your teeth. Go get some teeth. Put on stronger deodorant. Mitchum is, that's the, that's the strongest one you can get. Change your colors of your clothes. We know you wear Mitchum if you got that yellow under your arms. Okay. White shirt be yellow. Y'all don't sweat enough in church to wear Mitchum. But we come from a time where all we did was sweat. If you didn't wear Mitchum, you was in trouble. You was in trouble. Especially in that Presbyterian church, you was in trouble. It's hot down there. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Who's going to do what the Lord says today? Go through that. Be changed, y'all. It's just starting with your leader. Be changed. Change your mindset. Open yourself up to more. Read more. Look at more stuff. Stop being so closed off to people. You think your, the ministry in you is only for what you see? When God shows you my, it, no, oh God. When God shows you ministry, he always shows you abundance of people. Always gives people that vision. I told myself preaching to thousands. <laughs> and you never hit the thousands in one time. But you do hit the thousands over a course of time. And God will show you every face you're going to minister to. I wonder if Billy Graham saw it. I wonder if Miles Monroe saw it. I wonder. Ever wonder? Uh, Pastor Cirillo. Jimmy Swaggart, all these people that changed thousands of lives by the talk of Jesus Christ had to change. Jimmy Swaggart, I look, I look at him almost every day, right? Do I? I look at him every day, just about. I go to sleep with Jimmy Swaggart on. And I look at his old crusades that got eight and 10,000 people in, in the 80s. And I said, what was on his mind? Because he was doing music and sounding like studio work in the 80s. We can't achieve that in, in a little church but he's doing that on TV and his sound hasn't changed and it's been 35 years and he still sounds professional because God didn't just give him salvation message. He, he gave him, he gave him media perfection. Okay. See, I, I guess I'm, did y'all hear what I just said? He gave him media perfection in the eighties when people was using hand cameras and couldn't even stay still filming great messages, pastors, and you got, and the person filming, and they go, yeah, pastor. You hear all that. But yet God raises a white guy from Tulsa to come out with perfection of the gospel so that rich businessmen wanted to say, here's a million dollars. It took him $5 million for each crusade. Where do you get that money from? Where do you get $5 million for each crusade to pay everybody? Where? See, thou not there yet. And God can't, oh, pastor, your message is so great. Where is it going? If I don't have perfection somewhere, if somebody's not being made perfect, uh, where are we going? We're going nowhere quick because Vashti still wants to refuse. Everybody stand, I'm done.